Hi, this is Tamara at MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to make Lion Brand's Kitchen Cotton Shaped Washcloth. This is a free pattern you can find on their website. It's easy to download or print out, as I've done right here. And while the pattern calls for a specific color, you can, of course, use any color you like. I'll be using Lion Brand's Kitchen Cotton in Snap Pea, which is a beautiful bright green. Reminds me quite a bit of Pantone's next color of the year. So let's go ahead and get started. This pattern calls for not only the yarn, but a J hook. In this case, I'm using one by Furls. And here I have several steps from the washcloth made. And it also demonstrates that you could really stop at any row in this pattern and get a great looking washcloth or dishcloth. I actually like this size quite a bit. It's about hand sized. This is one, two, three, four, five, six rows in. Um, it's an eight row pattern, so six rows in, I find it's a good washcloth size. The full size, nine rows, makes a great washcloth. Very big and generous. So you can make this pattern any size you want. You could keep going beyond this to make a big blanket. But I'm going to show you right now how it's made. So I'll set those aside and take our label off and find our end. A lot of people like to work from the inside and sometimes I do too. But with a lot of yarns, I prefer just to go ahead and work from the outside. I get a lot less tangles that way. So, looking at our pattern here, we're going to start with a magic circle. Now, everybody, I shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people do their magic circles a little differently. I'm going to show you how I do it. If you don't want to start with a magic circle, you can start with a slip knot like you normally would, but instead of putting your hook in there right away, you make it a little bigger and just treat that as your circle or your ring that you crochet into. But starting with the magic circle, I like to wrap around my finger twice towards me like so. Then I go under both loops with my hook, pull that furthest one back to the front, and then I start crocheting from there. Then as I crochet, I'll make sure to work around both those strands right here as I work the stitches around the ring that is currently around my finger. And that will create a ring that when I pull this end right here, it will tighten up very small. The trick thing, the trick to it is you really have to make sure to weave in that first end really well to get the magic ring to stay. So I'm actually going to start over again and leave a little bit more of a tail. So I wrap around my fingers twice, just one finger, or you could use two if you prefer. I'm going to pull down a little bit to make sure I've got enough tail to weave in later. And I'm going to go under both loops, grab that first or that second one, the one furthest back closest to my hand, pull it through, and then yarn over and start crocheting. We're going to start round one with a chain three. There's one, two, and three. You can see that first one is real short. Let me pull it up a little closer to the camera here. That first chain, so if you find that's too short, it's okay to go ahead and skip counting that one and count the ones after that if you prefer. But I'm just going to go ahead and count that as our first chain three, which counts as our first double crochet. Then I work another double crochet in the ring like so. I just make sure to go under both those loops. And after I've worked that double crochet there, let me pull it up here. I can, you can see I pulled my finger out. We now have a ring. I'm working around both of those strands of yarn and our ring will be stable until I pull that end, which will tighten it all up. So to continue around round one, we've got a chain three, which counts as a double crochet, another double crochet, and then we chain one, and then we do that again, two double crochets followed by a chain one. And we keep doing that on around until we have a total of 12 double crochets and six chain ones made. So you can see I go under both those strands with each stitch, like so. And I probably won't go all the way around the circle by the time I've made my 12 double crochets, but that's okay. When I pull that end tail there, it's all going to tighten right up. Sorry, I'm dropping my yarn here. I can walk and chew bubble gum, but sometimes talking and crocheting gets a little tricky. So let's see here. We've got a chain one, and then we've got two, four, six, eight. So we've got Another couple repeats here. Go into that magic circle. Make sure you go around both those strands of yarn every time. 
and I'm having trouble getting my yarn. There we go. One more repeat, two double crochets. I do tend to hold on to my stitches as I'm making them. I find it makes the stitches themselves a little more even, especially when working with cotton yarn, but you can of course make your double crochets in your own style. So we've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve double crochets with a single crochet in between each pair. So you can see we didn't get all the way around that ring there, which is perfectly fine because we take that tail and when we pull on it, you can see that center hole closes right up. I could pull harder and close it all the way. I can leave it a little bit open, whatever you want to do. And then when we're all done, we just want to make sure to weave that end in around the circle and back the other direction a couple times to really secure the magic ring in place. So we finished round one. It's time to go ahead and join. We're going to join to the top of the chain three. Remember that first chain three right there counted as our first double crochet. So we'll go under the top two loops of that top chain there. Never my favorite part. Sometimes I have to use the hook to get in there really well. You want to make sure to make the chain at the top of your chain three particularly loose enough that you can get your hook in there. I should have made it a little bit looser. But we'll get through it anyway. There we go. You can see I've slip stitched in there. And that is the end of round one pretty easy. Let's move on to round two. We're going to start by slip stitching over to that first chain one space. You can kind of pull it apart right there and see that's where our first chain one space is. So I want to slip stitch in the next stitch like so. Then slip stitch right into that chain one space. Okay and then we're going to do sort of that same chain three there that counts as our first double crochet. We pull up a little more yarn free here. And then we work another double crochet right into that chain one space there that we're working into. Followed by a chain one and then two more double crochets both worked into that chain one space. So there's one and there's two like so. Okay, so in that chain one space we've got two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. And that's what we're going to do in each chain one space round. We're going to skip the actual stitches for round two and just work into the chain one space spaces. So in the next chain one space I'll work two double crochets like so, chain one, and then two double crochets. A little bit more yarn here. And like so. So that is our repeat on a round. So I'll go ahead and do that and see you at the end of this round. All right, so here we are at the end of round two. I've got my two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet in each chain one space around. Doesn't look too fantastic yet, but we'll get there. So now I'm going to finish off by once again slip stitching in the top of that chain three. I made it a little bit looser this time and it's much easier to get into. There we go. All right, and that's it for round two. So round three begins exactly the same way. We're going to slip stitch over to that first chain one space. But at this point, I want you to make sure and make this slip stitch really nice and loose. And the way to do that is to go into the stitch and pause for a second. Maybe move your hook back and forth a little bit, let it wiggle so that you make sure that the loop that makes the slip stitch the loops rather that makes the slips make the slip stitch uh, don't get too tight so you'll be able to work into them again later. So we'll go ahead now and pull that through and then go ahead and slip stitch on into the chain one space and then we're going to begin again exactly the same. Chain three, make sure that top chain three is a little looser and then a double crochet, chain one, two double crochets in that first chain one space. So like so. And then in this round, round three, is where we'll really start establishing the stitch pattern as it grows. What we're going to do, instead of skipping all these stitches and going to the next chain one space here, let me try and put it down, make it a little bit easier to see, I hope. 
There we are. If I can get all the ends out of the way. All right, so what we're going to do is instead of just working in the chain one spaces, we're going to work a double crochet, then skip the center two. You can kind of see when we made those big V stitches before, we've got two on the inside there or outside, the two that end one and finish another that we've skipped stitches in between, those two stitches are always going to be skipped. So in round three, we'll double crochet in this one, skip these two, double crochet in this one, do our chain one thing, two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet, double crochet in the next one, skip two, double crochet in the next, do our chain one thing. So let's go ahead and work the first couple of those together here. I've got my two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. What I'm going to do is double crochet in the next stitch like so. Then I'm going to skip the next two stitches right here. You can see they're the ones that are kind of over the stitches we skipped before. So we skip those two, double crochet in the next stitch, which is the one right before the next chain one space, like so. And then we work on our chain one space again. Two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. And that is our basic repeat. After we do our chain one, stuff our chain one repeat then we double crochet in the next one like so skip the next two and double crochet in the next one after that so i will see you at the end of round three all right so now i am finishing up round three and you can see i've done my last repeat here where it's double crochet the chain one repeat which is two double crochets chain one two double crochets double crochet in the one after that I skip the next two stitches, but then as we get to the end of this round, I need to make one more double crochet on this before that chain one space there. So that's where we're going to end up working into that slip stitch we made and why you want to make sure it's not too tight. If you find it is too tight and for whatever reason you can't pull your work back out, then you can always try and work into the stitch beneath it and just enclose the slip stitch in it, but it's better if you can work into that slip stitch. So then we again finish it up by slip stitching in the top of that chain three there, like so. And that is the end of round three. And as you continue to work right now, it just sort of looks like a hexagon, but it'll start to get a little bit more shape as we continue. Okay, so here is round four. This one, I've went ahead and finished off. It's a very small size. If you want just a little scrubber, this one might be good for washing your face, but we can see the stitch pattern has continued. We've got our round one here, round two, round three, and here is round four. And this is the way that the stitch pattern continues. We've got our, let me move that aside a little bit so we don't have that in back. We've got our chain one repeat. Remember we slip stitch over to that first chain one. And then in the chain one, we work our two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. And then what we do after that for round four is work in the next two double crochets, skip two. Remember I said we always skip those two right there, that first one and last one. And then double crochet in the next two and do our chain one space repeat. Next two, skip two, next two, chain one repeat. Next two, skip two, next two, the chain one repeat. And that, you can see it's starting to get a little bit more shape here on round four, a little bit more star shaped. I think this actually in white looks a fair bit like a, uh, like a snowflake, which I think is really pretty right there. So that was round four. We worked through round three together. That's round four. This is after round five, one, two, three, four, five. And you can see if I hold it up, I know red's a little harder to see on camera, but you can see, hopefully, that there is our chain one repeat right there, two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. And so then for round five, we'll work in the next three, skip two, the next three, chain one repeat, the next three, skip two, the next three, chain one repeat, all the way around. So with each round as we move up, after round three there, we're gonna add one more on each side of the chain one repeat. We always just skip those two, and that's what helps give us that shape. So we'll set a sound round five, and here we have one, two, three, four, five, six rounds on the white one. And this one, you can see the shape is even more defined. And we've got, we should have four. Let's find out. We've got our chain one repeat right here. 
and try and hold it behind my hand so it's a little easier or in front of my hand so it's a little easier to see two double crochet chain one two double crochet and then on either side of that we've got four double crochets one two three four skip two one two three four so if that's what we do after round five round six we should have round or excuse me this is one two three four five six this is round six we've got four on each side so then for round seven we'll have five on each side and finally when you get to round eight which is the final round if that's where you decide to sit up then we've got our chain repeat here two double crochets chain one two double crochets and one two three four five six double crochets before we skip two then six more before our chain repeat. So you can see this one creates a lovely big washcloth. And so if you want to keep going, then with the next round, you would have the chain repeat and then seven stitches before you skip two and then seven. And that is the basic plan for the Lion Brand Kitchen Cotton Shaped Washcloth. That's how it made. It makes a lovely gift set uh, for hostessing or hostesses. Uh, for the holidays, you can make these in any colors, red, white, and blue. Um, you know, whatever, orange and black, whatever, whatever you can find in whatever colors you like. Um, these also would make great doilies for underneath other like potted plants or under a vase. Um, whatever you want to make with these, make it big and make it a blanket. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel.